why should a scientist study economics? Because you are all are going to be scientists. Of course, some of you may uh, leave the science career after your MSc year, or in between also you may leave next year you may join some other course. Uh, that you know all individual choice. But uh, most of you will uh, try to be a scientist, and uh, then you must think of why you should study economics. Uh, so we'll address that question first, and then uh, uh, we'll uh, go to other things. So economics. Now I'm not going to get into definition. That will come at the end of today's lecture or the next lecture. Economics basically helps you in uh, making good decisions. Again, you must think in that part of other people who don't study economics, they are unable to make any uh, good decisions. Uh, yes, they do, uh, but uh, economics, economists basically try to analyze the things using the economic tool. Say, like the fruit was falling every day, right? It is only due to the rules of the fruit is falling. From the tree and he brought science to that, right? And he interpreted that. So, like that, every day we will do a lot of things uh, that will have an economic answer, okay? but we have an hour of it. Right? So, uh, as a student of economics, we see economics everywhere. Okay? Even when you join Kaiser, I also see some economics behind it, isn't it? So, to ask this question to you, why do you join Niger? Do you find any economic answer to this question? Or why did your father insist that you to join Niger? See, this happens either way. Either you have opted for Niger or your father or mother has influence on you. Because maybe uh, your father had a dream to study science in a good institute. He might have studied or he could not study. That's why he thought his or her dream will be fulfilled for you. So this one possibility. But the other possibility is that you really love science. Okay? And, so, and you also love nature. Okay? That's why you are there. The other answer would be that, okay, you did not get elsewhere, you have giant. <laughs> so no, there will be multiple choices. choices. And so you put it in back. So uh, and the number will be quite distributed. You know, it's not that you know, everyone will say that no, my father only said that we will join nature. No. It will not be that. 100% will not be the answer. But if I get 20% students will say, yes, I did not know what to study, but my father said, no, you apply that, then that's not what I used to study. How many people agree with this answer? Raise your hands. That your father said to join my side. No? Or you are again scared to raise your hands? No? No, your father did not insist you. Then that is very good. So that means all of you have decided to join my side? Yes. By choice? 100% answer is this? Yes. I don't agree with this. But if you are saying, okay, I will believe. Okay? Because you, know, you are saying, I have to believe it. I have no other option. Uh, but if that is the thing, then again, the second question is, why not other Why not other institutes? Because you are you know, came to Niger only, not elsewhere. That's why you are in Niger. Or there is scholarship, if you study in Niger, there is a scholarship. So, uh, no, that's how, uh, that makes a lot of, you know, uh, uh, that is an incentive, financial. And financial incentive is a very strong incentive. In fact, I should tell you, when I joined the uh, MPhil, Master in Philosophy, I did in Kerala, which so I have a very strong connection in Kerala. Uh, so in, in many classes, you will find I am learning a lot of uh, things about Kerala. Uh, not that all things are good, uh, there are many bad things also, I will talk about that. Uh, but anyway, when I joined MPhil at Center for Development Studies, the uh, program, the main incentive was 2,500 rupees scholarship per month. Okay? Because my father had said that after post graduation, I will not give money any of my sons. So I, funding will be stopped. Okay? So I thought of if I join MPhil at CDS, then I will get 2,500 rupees. So I don't have to ask for money to my parents. Right? And that time, I am going to come 2004. So that was, at that time, it was a reasonable, you know, good amount of money. Okay. So, uh, so money actually definitely you know, uh, helps us in making some decisions. And someone who might have joined Niger, think that over here I will get scholarship. 
So money to invest your decision are uh, The other choice would be that if you study in Heisler, probably your job prospects will be better. Then take an economics right, behind it. That studying science in Heisler would give you a better job and that's why I study science. So some other students would think thinking studying science in Niger is less costly. Isn't it? If you study elsewhere, it would be really expensive. Now many private universities have come up. And they are providing also good interest, but then those are very costly. Right? But studying in Niger is less costly, so it, it makes all economic sense to join Niger. Right? So there is economic thing, right? When you join Niger, uh, there is uh, some economic rational behind it. And some of you may also leave science uh, after your MSc here, thinking that you know, probably that you could see better opportunity elsewhere than science. So that's when there are economic lessons uh, behind your decision making. And uh, in fact, very recently uh, someone has written a book, uh, Economics of Small Things. They like the God of Small Things. Uh, from Kerala, yes, from Kerala, yes. Uh, so, uh, like that, there is a book uh, you know, written by Sudhito Sarandi. Uh, he is working in Virginia uh, Tech, USA. Uh, he has recently published a book, uh, Economics of Small Things. You know, if you, can, if you are interested, you can read that book. Uh, uh, okay, I am not advertising for the book, but it's a good book. It's a, uh, and, it, and it's told it will be just something. Uh, uh, yes. So uh, then the next question will come that uh, what else you would have done if you had not uh, selected in Niger? If I ask this question to your students, I always ask the question in the back answers. So we were sitting in the front row, I don't ask anything. So the question will always go to the back end. Yes. So tell me, uh, if you were not selected in Niger, where would have joined? Yes. Now I'll go back. I will go back probably. I uh, will not be visible in the camera front. It's okay. Yeah. So can you tell me? If you have not selected in either, where else you have joined? You would have to say. Right. Oh, you have done it now. Yes. You will have prepared for one more. Yes. Yes. MBBS. MBBS. So you all have very high opportunity cost. Okay? That means if you are not going to be a scientist, you can be a doctor. Right? And uh, that is a very high opportunity cost. Some people, of course, may say that I have prepared you know, one more year and uh, so that I get nicer. Because you have very strong difference for nicer. That, that is quite obvious also for some people. Uh, so, what is this opportunity cost? And in economics, this is what you use very frequently in opportunity cost. But this opportunity cost can the next best alternative for you. And if you do not join Niger, you will become a doctor. You would have joined for MBS. Okay. Similarly, you know, you, if, when you think about time, if you do not study for one hour, then what else would you, will you do? Right? So that is your opportunity. So for example, if teach at Niger, where else would I teach? So that would be my opportunity. Similarly, if you have 100 rupees money, then if you do not spend this money for your book, where else would you spend this money? So the opportunity cost of 100 rupees. So why I am saying this? See, government, think about the government. So when the government has some money, you can also think whether this money should be spent in Niger or it should be spent elsewhere. Right? Whether if you do not get 5,000 rupees scholarship, where should this money go? Okay? So that is the opportunity of the money. And uh, that is very important because uh, when, suppose uh, now somebody will know who is to hire you to employ someone, employ someone. And how will you decide what is your wages? Or salary? Two ways, you know, is it just term you can use? Uh, so if somebody wants to now hire you, now what salary 
to do its practice. What is your expectation? What is your reserve price? Yes. Zero. <laughs> so, is it the answer for everyone that I would like to join a job now, but uh, you would not expect any salary? You will prefer to work for free? Then I will hire a lot. <laughs> no? No, definitely you will have a price. No, that is called reserve price. It means if you do not pay this much, I am not going to work. So in that context, your opportunity cost will be very important. So you will see that if I uh, no, uh, join say job X, then what will be my salary? Then you will come back if I do not join, that what is I will do. So if you know that okay, if I will get minimum this much if I do not join that job, then you can have a better bargaining power. So opportunity cost is used to you know, uh, uh, everywhere in economics and uh, including your science that you do, do not ties it, what else will you do? And you know this concept that is the next best alternative that is called. Then again, some big concepts will begin that uh, uh, is neither of any science education in general uh, influenced by the national and international economic situation or crisis? Yes. 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 How? Money is invested in R&D, then R&D of course. I can give you a very quick example. Now, due to COVID-19, you might be aware that the tax revenue collection of government of India has fallen significantly. And we are directly coming under Prime Minister Modi. So, this is Department of Arctic Energy, right? And always DI comes from the Prime Minister. Because you know, the nuclear codes and all those things have to look at confidential. So, that's how uh, always the nuclear energy department is not given to any minister. That always comes under the Prime Minister. Okay. So we come under the Prime Minister directly. And uh, that's how when Niger was set up, one was very generous. He just sanctioned 900 crore at, at one store. Okay. And that's how this campus was, this beautiful campus has been constructed. It's a beautiful campus, or not? Yes. Uh, so one was very generous, and that's how this campus was uh, constructed. You laid the foundation stone here. And Ram Modi dedicated this to the nation. Uh, and uh, but last year, due to COVID-19, the revenue collection has fallen. And now uh, the ministry is asking to cut down the expenses under the different heads, including our library expenditure. No, in for library we spent crores of rupees. I think some 10 15 crore or more than that. Okay? Uh, only for library, okay? because. Uh, for science, you have to access different data sets, like for biology, you need you know, a very rich data set. Similarly, for other uh, you know, departments, you need consumables, like chemicals, equipments, proper maintenance, all those things, right? So, you need crores of rupees, and then now, Prime Minister, Prime Minister will not tell you to our director, right? Uh, so, his uh, and secretary, facility secretary, has asked to cut out expenses. So, this year, we will not be able to expand uh, anything if you want to construct a new building. Yeah. So suppose now some new types should come and then think that uh, you know science, uh, this people are not doing anything. In fact, I should tell you also that two years ago, uh, this was you know, discussed widely, particularly when the seventh pay commission was implemented in this country. It was discussed widely, uh, and this letter was sent to many uh, institutions uh, to basically uh, uh, answer this question like, what is the contribution of the institute to the nation? How? What is your contribution to the nation? And uh, why should we give you so much money to the institute? The government can ask this question. Because the government is getting crores of rupees here, here. And not 2 or 3 crore or 10 crore even. The number is in 3 digit or in 4 digit crore. Crore, forget about crore. Before that, you have to write 3 digit or 4 digit. So we get that much money per year. So if the institute is getting, say, 1000 crore, 900 crore every year, then you have to justify that. No, we need money because we are contributing uh, this oil to the nation. And uh, now, if Prime uh, Minister feel that no, this institute is not very really contributing to the nation, then they can always say that no, we will not give you money. Right? So, five can change. Similarly, your economic situation can change. Your international collaboration. Also, influence the order changes that can also influence. 
see, for example, our trade relation with America or other countries change. And that's how our economic growth is suppose hampered. Then that can impact our revenue flow and that can also impact the funding to rise, right? In fact, I can also tell you that nowadays, since India's economic situation is improving, uh, different international agencies are reducing the funding to India, including the stars. They are thinking that if you have money to send mom, mass government mission, then why should we give money to it? Right? You are ready to go to ma ma mass, then why are you asking for money to us? So you can fund yourself. So we don't have to give stars. So, in fact, this has happened when we send the uh, mass orbital mission, different countries you know, have uh, responded in different ways. And different offices have also shut down their offices in India. For example, DFID, that is Depart Department for International uh, uh, Department for International Development, that is coming under government of uh, UK. Uh, they have stopped many offices in India because DFID used to provide funding to different states for different development projects. They used to give aid, foreign aid, and sometimes also loan. Uh, but they have stopped this because they thought that no, you have money to send mom. Okay. So uh, your international uh, order also changes that you can influence your science also. And uh, similarly, is your, uh, is, um, how is your individual decision influenced by the macroeconomic scenario? Uh, do you understand when I say macroeconomic scenario? Yes or no? Yes, like the GDP knows how the GDP growth comes. Like now, uh, what are the GDP growth uh, that we recorded in the past quarter of this year? Do you remember this? Do you study newspaper? Yes? Minus? Minus? Minus, Minus, huh? Minus 20. Minus 20. In the past quarter of 2020, 2021 fiscal year, the GDP has shrunk by 24 percent. That means the income generation in the country in this year, in the past quarter, has fallen compared to last year by 24 percent. That means, on an average, an Indian earned uh, 24 rupees less in the past quarter compared to the last year. If, uh, last year, in the past quarter, you earned 100 rupees. This year, you have earned 75 rupees. This is the simplest way you can analyze. That is how GDP can use. Now, what is the implication of this? Due to COVID 19, many people have lost job. Many people are not getting campus recruitment. Placements have all stopped, right? And even if they had got a campus before March uh, 2020, they did not get the apartment. So, these are the implications. So that means individuals can also be influenced by the factor of Similarly, your job aspects do you also analyze that okay, in the coming years, you know, which subject will get better job? You so analyze that, right? That's your have all joint idea. If you have not done that analysis, then uh, this is quite dangerous. Okay? Because you should always analyze. And you always see the changes uh, in the demand for different subjects. Uh, in fact, for economics, I can tell you uh, earlier we have joined I, I used to work in uh, Uttal University of Nestor. Uh, there, I saw now the quality of students have got significantly improved in the last couple of years. Why? Because the demand for IT probably has gone down, or for the management student subjects have gone down. So now the students are preferring to study economics, and that's a good students are coming for, to study economics. So that means your international demand or national demand is changing the uh, you know, decision making to so what subject to study. So, so that thing, you know, uh, that will be taught in economics, or you can uh, use economics to analyze all these things. How will my research impact the economy? First, what is the price of the vaccine for COVID-19? Three. Three? Three. Then who will bear the cost of production? Now, as an individual, we would expect that it should be free for us. But think from the perspective of the producer. When you produce it, some cost is involved, and uh, to have given extra different private companies might have given uh, extra salary to work extra hours so that they get the vaccine uh, no, uh, earliest, so that they can capture the global market, and so they have spent crores of rupees, or even we can say a billion dollar. So now that cannot be given for free. Now what principle? No, 
will be applicable to decide price. Right? That's the economic principle behind it. So economics will help you to answer this. I mean, okay, as a consumer, you want it to be free. But the producer always wants to get the maximum price. Now, how this problem will be solved? The producer wants the maximum price because they have taken the risk. They work for 24 hours, 24 by 7, that's how they have come up with the vaccine. Now, they cannot give it to you for free. If government subsidizes, that is all fine. But then they are not going to give it for free. So, these are things we can, we can discuss whether this should be given at a very high price. Many states have already announced, including Kerala that they will give the vaccine for free to all the people. Uh, some 10 states have already announced, I think our government is also a very benevolent person, they will also announce that uh, all vaccine will be for free, even though it is not a very economic advanced state. Then what are the implications of importing technology from other countries, including vaccine? But if you fail to produce a vaccine in our country, and you have to get the either way, either you buy it from other country, or you get the technological know-how, so that you have to give them royalty. Okay. Uh, you have to, so what are the implications? Do you have sufficient private exchange to pay that? Now, if not, then how do you earn those private exchange? Because foreigners will not accept our carbon photo. Okay. means Ruby. So they all want to um, photo of their country. So then, how do you pay them? So that means you need uh, the currency of their country. And if you do not have that currency, then you cannot buy it. Buy those uh, products, buy that taxi. Then, how can I buy my uh, country self subsidy in our technologies? Now, this is a big question now being asked in the entire country because now we are discussing the concept. But, Atma Nirvata, make in India, down there. So, uh, can it be self subsidy? In, in, in medicine or in other technology. Uh, so all those things you know, can be discussed uh, using the economics lens. Then you would be expecting as a citizen of this country, what should government do for me? You never think what should I do for my nation? Right? Have you got thought? No. But you know that you know, I am living in a welfare nation, democratic nation. I have the right to demand everything and I know I have studied the fundamental rights that is written in the constitution, so I will always demand. But you should also read the fundamental duties, right? And uh, in that, yeah, you have so many duties. So, but you expect, because you are living in welfare this and you expect what should government do for me? Can government do everything for you? No. If you are uh, probably in a, in a better of situation, there are people who are not getting sufficient food to eat. Now, whether government should provide free food to all, uh, or government should provide uh, uh, free education to all, or government should provide a, a car to everyone, okay. or government should provide at least a laptop to every citizen, or a smartphone to all for <coughs> availing the online education. Now, what, what should government do? These are big questions, but then government has limited money. No, you can expect anything. We can demand always many things. But uh, we do not want to pay tax. Then if the person will come that, okay, what are the roles of the national government, the union government, the state government, and the local governments like panchayat raj institutions and then the local local bodies, municipalities, and all those things? Have you ever thought from where government gets money? You must think only tax. But then how many taxes have taxes have there? How much tax can be imposed? Can government impose a very high rate of tax? So what is the optimal rate of tax that you should know? So those are basically you know, studied in economics. And the theory is basically to study the optimal tax. Then how should government tax? What should government tax? Whether kerosene should be taxed or petrol should be taxed. Whether diesel should be taxed more or petrol should be taxed more. Whether CNG should be taxed at higher rate or kerosene should be taxed at a higher rate. You can ask this question to you, what is your answer? What should be taxed at a higher rate? CNG or kerosene? Why? Because it is not good for anyone. But what is the reality? Kerosene is sold at the cheapest price. Why? Because it has a distribution, redistribution objective. 
because we assume that not assume it is hard that uh, the board will use kerosene. Right? That's how we are not able to impose a very high rate of tax, although it is the dirtiest energy. Okay. So, uh, and there is a conflict between these two objectives. If you want to fulfill your environmental objectives, then kerosene should be taxed at the, uh, at the highest rate. But then it is not possible because you have weak strength of objectives, because this is used by the poor people and you cannot tax it. And if you use the ability to pay theory, then Kerosene is not actually really uh, you know, calling for a higher rate of tax because both people use it. On the other hand, CNG is used by these people and that's how it should be taxed at a high okay. So we, we discussed those theories. Then why should we trade with other countries? During this COVID-19 also, you must have read in the newspaper the trade war between America and China. Similarly, whether India is losing or gaining out of this. Similarly, there is also, uh, you know, uh, uh, some argument between USA and India on trade because Trump was telling that you are not buying our product, you are not letting our products to be sold in your market. Okay. So, uh, why should we import your products? Then what are the economic principles behind it? Should we have trade at all? Or we should close our borders? Uh, when we talk about uh, the visa, when our people go to the other country, uh, we talk about visa norms. So basically, uh, uh, that is coming to the factors of production, land, labor, capital, and organization. We will be discussing those things in details. Uh, then comes, why are some countries richer than others? Have you heard this question? Why? Why are some states richer than others in India? For example, uh, this big question, why some nations are richer than others? <laughs> What is your answer? They support each other and the countries people support each other and that's what they are richer. No, what is your answer? Why some nationalists are richer than others? People support each other and then the country will So if people support each other, then uh, the nation will go. Uh, in fact, they treat themselves as the first people. 
They don't have water. If they dig the soil, they don't get water. Don't you think that this is a curse? You cannot drink anything. You dig the soil and you don't get water to drink. So you have to purify your sea water to get drink water. They drink. They think that that is a cost people. But do you think that they are people when they don't drive golden car? Okay? They sleep on golden bed. Right? Those kings of you know, all those you know, countries. Uh, Emirates. Okay? We see all those things. So uh, they are very rich people. And they have huge amount of gas up, uh, huge amount of products because they export uh, this petrol to all the countries in the world. Okay? So uh, in fact, there are many answers to this question. In fact, uh, this question used to be asked in the 18th century. And we are still asking this question, and we do not have a satisfactory answer. So the father of economics, you know, who is the father of economics? Adam Smith, who wrote the book in 1776. Uh, the book title is, do you know the, the book name? Wealth of Nessa. In, in, in short, uh, the book name is Wealth of Nessa. Let's give the book title is, An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of Wealth. And inquiry into the nature and causes of it. In that book, Adam Smith basically has tried to understand why some nations are richer than others. Imagine if we had found the satisfactory answer, all the nations would have addressed this answer, no question. And then now all the world nations would have become rich. Right? But have you added that and no problem? No. Still, we are battling with the same person, and we are, of course, we are having different answers, and we are trying to correct that uh, uh, problem. Like the background lessons are being given different kind of assistance so that they come up, okay, and uh, poverty is alleviated everywhere. So we do certain things, but then still, we do not have hundred percent satisfied answer to this question, and we are still doing research on the same person. And within the state, within the country, uh, now we have so many states, why some states are richer than others? Do I have a satisfactory answer to this question? Probably not. But different students will have different answer to this question. So, so they come. But still, government is trying to do a lot of things. Okay. Government is trying to provide support to the weaker states. And uh, of course, it also provides support to the advanced states. But then uh, the problem has not been addressed. And uh, then, what is the best way to alleviate poverty? So I ask this question. Now, in India, suppose you have 21 percent of people are living below the poverty line. So that means out of 130 crore people, 21 percent of people are living below the poverty line. So approximately, how many crores? Uh, 23, 26 crores people are living below the poverty line. And that number also varies at the states. In Odisha, out of 4.5 crore, 33% is people are living below poverty line. In Kerala, the number would be 6%. In Bihar, the number would be almost similar to Odisha's case. So, uh, if you are suppose the chief minister of the state, you know, what will you do to alleviate the poverty so that nobody is poor? Now, assume that you are Chief Minister, like Nayak Moody, for a day. So, what will you do? Yes. Education. Education. Bring more investment into the state. Yes. Bring more investment into the state. Bring more investment to the state. Job opportunities. Provide job opportunities. So, if you will become the Chief Minister, you will provide job opportunities. What kind of job will you provide? Manufacturing. And jobs are all falling because of automation. Now, machine is working everywhere. No human being wants to do hard work. So, you have to develop skills according to the new idea. No, so ultimately, now I asked four kids students. Now, you gave five answers. Now, what will Chief Minister do? Say, now Chief Minister, three. Say, when I ask five economists, they give me five answers. Now, which answer? Uh, so, Jesus also gets confused and he does whatever he thinks is appropriate. So, 
tool. See, education could be the most powerful tool. But are you providing education? And it's not, it's not only namesake education, it should be quality education, right? And it took almost 50 years for the government of India to realize that universalization of education is important. When did we start universalization of elementary education? Only in 2004. So right to education came only after 50 years of India's education. Right? And now do you think that only private education is sufficient? What do you do with private education? You can operate your mobile phone, right? If you have private education, can you operate a smartphone? You cannot. Or you can probably. Because average speeds are also different. But you cannot take the benefit of the smartphone. You will only watch YouTube videos. But the smartphone has become so powerful, right? Everything is available on the computer. So if you want everybody to use the smartphone in the smartest way, then they have to educate it. So I am providing higher education. Now, is higher education free in this country? Are we providing quality private education to all? No. Probably, if I take an estimate of your class, I believe 10% students would have started in government school. Isn't it? All of you might have started in private school. All of you would have gone for private coaching. Yes, isn't it? To get into nice You would have prepared for many other things, LBPS, IITs, JE, NEET, and so on. So, at last we got nice. Or at best we got nice, whatever. So that means people who do not have money, they cannot even join NICE, isn't it? That means government is not providing quality education, and that's why you have to go for coaching. And uh, people who can afford coaching cannot come to NICE. Is it not injustice? Okay. So, but there are many questions. Whether you should uh, no, provide education, then higher education, or primary education, and how much money is going to be spent? Uh, so, big questions are there. Then, is inequality bad? Inequality, you understand? Some people are richer than other. Mukesh okay, Samani has uh, so much money, and we do not have that much money. We are struggling with uh, uh, no, a small house and all that, but he has such a big house. Mukesh okay, Samani could have distributed all the money like Ajim Premji is doing. Ajim Premji has distributed so much of money in this country. And uh, but, uh, maybe Mukesh okay, Samani is thinking very big, maybe we will give money. Quite late. But anyway, as of now, uh, we see that very few people know in that Oxfam report uh, says that maybe some 50 to 60 people, richest people of India, own half of India's wealth. And similarly, 50 to 60 richest people of the planet Earth own half of Earth's wealth. Imagine, is it not injustice? Only 65 people, richest people of the world, own half of the world's wealth. Is it acceptable? No. Then what should we do to bridge this gap, income gap? That is, inequality is definitely bad, right? That should be? Should we go for a socialist pattern of uh, Yes, sir? No, but, but, but uh, there may be concern like uh, if, if they have people even individual and work for it, then uh, how can you decide what they will, what they will, should there be or how much he can or not? There can be one of the concerns. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that we do not have a very no, right answer in that. How, no, definitely we know that it is bad. But how to solve this in the current problem? So, but uh, inequality is like necessary for driving the society. So, you are saying inequality is good? Yeah. Right. So, at the same no, time, the law should be above some uh, like specific, like the law of the poor people. Yes. They should not be poor, but uh, they should have a sufficient earning so that they can live a sufficient life. But uh, there should be a difference between a higher bound and a lower bound so that the society... That means inequality to some extent is not probably desired. Yeah, sir. Actually, to some extent, there should not be people flaunting So, uh, 
Again, the question is that how to address this inequality problem? Inequality itself is a threat to democracy. Inequality is a threat to the growth itself. Okay. Because, see, when you are neighbor, I in some other class when you, when you discuss details about inequality, I will tell the story that uh, when your neighbor is growing, and uh, it's not that he, you know, uh, uh, no, how to respond to this. Some people may say that no, he has done hard work, that's so why he has grown. But sometimes you will find that no, he has not really done that much hard work, but he is growing some way. So then how to address this question? Similarly, some people did not have the opportunity to get education, and that's why we do not grow. So then how to address this problem? So there are uh, many such uh, uh, issues that we will be discussing. Uh, and the, this one you are almost thinking, right? <laughs> <laughs> we will start with economics by very chapter. Isn't it? In fact, I should have put this in the past slide. Because everyone thinks, well, in fact, this time I have come with this slide, but now I ask the question to try and listen that much. I want to we think that no economics will make us richer. So that way all economics teachers should be the richest people, right? So uh, do you think that economics teachers, all the economics teachers are richer? That not that. Probably they are uh, also coming at a lot bigger, but then uh, not so wealthy, right? So that is, uh, economics is not all about the study of wealth. Right? It also study many other things. And, uh, it can help you to manage your assets better. It can help you to make a better financial future planning. Okay. How should you prepare for your retirement? Now you must think of my father is giving money, so I don't have to think now. But then by the time you grow up, okay, you will have to think about it. So when I retire, because now that you do not have any pension. In, in government also, in Niger also, so we all will not get pension when I retire. In private also there is no pension. We of course have something called NPS, new pension scheme. Uh, but then that is not like the old pension scheme. So then how do you prepare for your work in yeah. Should I buy a car? Should I buy a house? Then why? In fact, you can also analyze how much money you should spend for your marriage. Whether you should spend uh, 10 years salary, or uh, 1 year salary, or 6 months salary for your marriage. Economics can be in doing that analysis. Although economics people are economics teachers are not very rich, but they can help you. Our economics subject can help you to analyze all these things in a better way. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's all.